Our solar system might have some more planets up its sleeve. We know about eight official planets, but they're not the only ones that survived the chaotic formation of our solar system 4.5 billion years ago. Astronomers say there are three categories of planets in our solar system. We're in the first one, the four rocky inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, that peacefully orbit the Sun. They're located within the main asteroid belt that separates Mars from Jupiter, which is in category number two. That one's a group of planets in the outer solar system, the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets have huge amounts of ice and gas around what scientists believe to be their rocky cores. The third group lies beyond the area where our local planets are, somewhere further than Neptune. It's the realm where you'll find dwarf planets such as Pluto, Eris, and Sedna, and many smaller space bodies like comets. But new findings say there could be something else lurking in the dark besides dwarf planets and tiny space bodies. Maybe even a new planet! Models scientists made say that our solar system used to have one or more rocky planets the size of Mars or Earth. Over time, these rocky wanderers interacted with the wide gravity fields of our gas giants. This kicked them into a far-out orbit, away from the neighborhood. The question is if one of those Mars-sized planets survived and could really be somewhere out there. Scientists have made simulations to see what potentially happened. These showed that in half of such cases where planets interact with the gravity of gas giants, they get ejected into interstellar space. In the remaining half, there's this one rogue planet left in an orbit similar to the ones the Kuiper Belt objects are following. There's only one thing left to do now. Find it. Astronomers found the loneliest planet in the universe. They were trying to find distant brown dwarf stars, or failed stars, ones that never become massive enough to start shining. Stars are born with big masses, which means they also have strong self-gravity. The star squeezes in on itself. That causes high internal temperatures and enables the star to shine. But instead, they found a lonely wanderer, CFBD SIR 2149. The planet is between 50 and 120 million years old and has a surface temperature of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Compared to stars, that's cold. At first, scientists thought it could be a brown dwarf star, but in that case, it would be way older. This starless planet floats around through space, passing only 130 light years away from our planet. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is 100,000 light years wide, so that's relatively close. The lonely traveler is actually a gas giant, four to seven times bigger than Jupiter. Maybe it was kicked out from its own solar system because of gravitational forces, or getting into another planet's orbit. Or it was formed away from its parent star. Far beyond Pluto, on the edge of our solar system, there's a space body about as big as Pluto, but a little bit colder and way denser. It's probably a big rocky body covered in a thin icy mantle. It's the dwarf planet Eris. Both Pluto and Eris occupy the Kuiper Belt, which is the distant ring of frigid space bodies that lies beyond Neptune. A day there lasts 25.9 hours, pretty similar to Earth. But Eris circles our Sun in the distance three times farther than Pluto, which means its year is pretty long, 557 Earth years. Eris has a bright, icy surface. It's one of the most reflective bodies in our solar system. It bounces back more than 95% of the light that strikes it. Somewhere out there, even farther, there's a super Saturn, J1407b, much larger than Jupiter or Saturn. It's an exoplanet, which means a planet that orbits a star other than our Sun. Super Saturn is 434 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Centaurus. It's the only exoplanet we know about with rings similar to Saturn. It actually has a huge ring system, 200 times bigger than Saturn's rings. There are more than 30 rings, each of them tens of millions of miles in diameter. There are gaps in the rings, which means there could be some interesting satellites, exomoons, around. If this super Saturn could swap places with our regular Saturn, its rings would absolutely dominate our sky. You could look up and easily see them. The view would be amazing because they would appear much bigger than a full moon. Scientists have found thousands of planets outside of our solar system. 
Some are dense as iron, while others are airy and light. And then there's the water world, GJ1214b, a steamy world, bigger than Earth and smaller than Uranus, 40 light years away from us in the constellation of Ophiuchus. It's a watery planet surrounded by a thick atmosphere, 2.7 times Earth's diameter and almost seven times heavier than our home planet. It was most likely formed somewhere farther from its star, where there was plenty of water ice, but later migrated to where it is today. Its surface temperature is 440 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too hot to host life like on Earth. It also has much less rock and much more water than our planet. Imagine a planet with no land, but only endless oceans covering all of its surface. High pressures and temperatures would form things like superfluid water or hot ice some pretty exotic materials that we can't see on our planet. Gliese 436b. It's a Neptune-sized exoplanet 30 light years away from our planet in the constellation of Leo. It makes one full orbit around its star in a little more than two days. This planet defies the laws of physics. It orbits its star, Gliese 436, which is smaller, cooler, and less luminous than our sun, at a distance 15 times closer than Mercury is to the sun. When we typically think of ice, we picture a frozen cube. But this planet has an icy surface, even though the temperature there is 980 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is way above the melting point, but the ice remains solid and burning hot. This happens because of very strong gravity. It compresses the water vapor in the atmosphere into solid ice. The pressure here doesn't allow the ice to melt, no matter how hot the surface is. Now imagine being on a mysterious planet and it suddenly starts raining sapphires and rubies. One distant exoplanet, Hat P7b, a gas giant 1,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Cygnus and 16 times bigger, has specific weather and pretty violent storms. Rubies and sapphires are scattered across the planet when it's raining. On the planet's night side, there's a high amount of corundum in the atmosphere. And corundum is what mineral gems such as sapphires and rubies are made of. Clouds of corundum give such an amazing view. The planet is plagued by severe winds that often turn into powerful storms that push huge masses of those clouds across the planet. Although the planet is uninhabitable, it would certainly be cool to come there and pick up some gems. Still, the weather is pretty wild. Plus, the temperatures are over 4,600 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, and its temperature is only 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking over the expanse of space, you can see a beautiful little blue dot in the endless darkness. It's an exoplanet, HD 189733b, that lies 63 light years from us in the constellation of Volpecula. But it's way hotter and larger than our planet, around the size of Jupiter and it completes its orbit around its host star in only 2.2 Earth days. That orbit is so close that the planet is most likely tidally locked. That means it's always showing only one face to its star, like our moon always shows one side to Earth. The weather here is crazy. The winds blow at up to 5,400 miles per hour, which is seven times the speed of sound. The fastest wind on Earth only hit the mark of 230 miles per hour. And it gets better. The rain here is not made of water, but of molten glass. Clouds are made of silicate atoms and particles. They are the key element that gives the planet its cobalt blue color, not the reflection of oceans, which is the case with Earth. Earth used to be purple. Today, even when you look at our planet from space, you see a lot of green. The green we see in nature is there because of photosynthesis, the process where plants transform energy coming from the sun into energy they need to live and to produce oxygen for us. The main part of the process that gives plants the green color is the chlorophyll pigment. A long time ago, instead of chlorophyll, there was a molecule called retinol. Its pigments absorb yellow and green light and turn it into red and blue. So the Earth was more purple. And then there's a pink planet, GJ504b, far away from us in the Virgo constellation, four times more massive than Jupiter. It's a newly formed exoplanet, around 160 million years old. By comparison, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. If we could go there, we would see an incredible world that glows from the heat of its formation. Everything around you would be colored magenta. 
we've discovered Kepler 22b, a small exoplanet in the Cygnus constellation. Seems like nothing important, right? But it's actually a big deal. This is the first planet located in the habitable zone that was found by the Kepler telescope. In other words, there may be water on this planet, and if there's water, there may be life. Kepler 22b can become our new potential home. So let's take a closer look at it. Actually, discovering new planets is not easy at all. Not all of them can be seen through our super cool telescopes, even the almighty Hubble. Sometimes the stars are so small and dim that it's really hard to find them on a map. The same thing happened with Kepler 22. In such cases, scientists have to use a special method. First, they take a bunch of photos of the star in different periods of time. Then, they look at them and think, hmm, are there any dark dots on this star somewhere? And if they find one, that might be a planet. These photos actually help us to discover some very important stuff. Like, first of all, this planet exists. Secondly, here is its size, radius, and proximity to the star. And finally, will we be able to live there? Now we know that Kepler 22b is very similar to our planet and could potentially become a second Earth. It's also very close to us, only 635 light years away. Yeah, it's about three quadrillion miles, but this is one of the closest options. Kepler 22, the star of Kepler 22b, is a yellow dwarf. It's very, very similar to our sun. The same size, the same radius, even the age is almost the same. 4 billion years. The difference is only in luminosity. It's about 20% dimmer than the sun. So, no matter how much you strain your eyes, you won't see this star in the night sky. The planet Kepler 22b is about 2.4 times larger than our Earth, and that's pretty good. More radius means more potential water and space to live. Although going from one city to another would take a while. It's scary to even imagine a three-day long plane flight. We don't know the exact mass of this planet, but scientists think it's bigger than Earth's. Actually, the mass of Kepler-22b can be up to 36 times greater than that of our planet. What does it mean? Vigorous gravity. If the planet is 36 times heavier than Earth, then gravity there will be about six times stronger. Can you barely lift 20 pounds of potatoes? Try 120. Not to mention that you yourself can become much heavier on that planet. You'll have to get incredibly pumped up just to walk there. You have to literally turn yourself into a bodybuilder just to get to work. The worst thing is that with such gravity, it'd be incredibly difficult for plants to survive there. They'd need at least a little freedom to rise up from the ground. And animals. Our dogs and cats would have to turn into little balls of muscle to survive there. But if this planet has its own animals or other inhabitants, we can roughly imagine what they may look like. They probably have a lot of legs to make moving easier. They aren't really tall, but they're very massive and extremely strong. Hmm, muscular giant spiders? Could be worse, I guess. The good news is that this is all unconfirmed information. If we're very lucky and gravity there turns out to be just a bit stronger than Earth's, then of course, it'll be much easier to live there. The next thing we know about Kepler 22b is that it's about 15% closer to its star than we are to the sun. If Kepler 22b existed in our solar system, it would be located somewhere between Earth and Venus. Does that mean we're all going to burn? No, silly. As I mentioned before, the star Kepler 22 is pretty cold, just some 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why we can assume that the temperatures on Kepler 22b will be about the same as we have on Earth. If the planet orbits its star the same way Earth orbits the Sun, which we don't actually know, Kepler 22b can rotate around its star on its side, like, for example, Uranus. What? Didn't you know Uranus is actually lying on its side? Also, look at its rings. Yes, Uranus also has rings, like Saturn, but they're vertical. The universe is truly a mysterious place. So, 
If Kepler-22b is really something like that, then the weather on the planet will be, to put it mildly, not very good. Incredibly cold winters will be regularly followed by hot summers. And, just like with tidally locked planets, we'd be able to live more or less comfortably only on the narrow piece of land between these two crazy sides. Let's hope that this is not the case and the planet rotates normally. But it's not all that bad. Studies show that there may be an ocean on Kepler-22b. You already know that water means life, but in this case, it's also a big plus because a planet covered by an ocean always has more stable temperatures. The water absorbs some of the heat and distributes it evenly across the planet. The hot parts cool down and the icy ones warm up. By the way, that's exactly what happened to Earth billions of years ago. When our planet started getting its first little puddles, our beloved moon helped these puddles to spread all over the planet. Thanks to this, a burning horror that used to be our Earth turned into a cute little ball full of life. So if Kepler-22b has water but no atmosphere, scientists think that the average temperature there could be around 12 degrees Fahrenheit. But if there's also an Earth-like atmosphere, then the temperature can reach 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be nice. And finally, one year there is equal to 290 Earth days, about nine months. The planet has no natural satellites, so unfortunately, we'd have to say goodbye to a beautiful view of the moon. On the bright side, we'd probably be able to see the sun as a distant little star. We could admire it in the night sky, remembering our home, while not hiding from giant spiders. And this is all that we know at the moment. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to explore such planets, so there's a lot of very important data that we don't know. For example, what kind of planet is this anyway? Yep, we're missing the most important information about Kepler-22b. We don't know if it's a rocky planet or not. And if not, then all the previously mentioned information means nothing. It may turn out to be a gas planet, or a planet covered with gas but with a solid core, like Neptune, or a water world covered with a giant ocean. In this case, it better be a water planet. Then at least we could build some kind of underwater city there. We could filter the water and eat fish until we evolve into an amphibious species. Does it even count as evolution if we go back to our roots? Scientists, however, think that Kepler-22b may turn out to be a Neptune-like planet. Some astronomers have even assigned the planet to a category of mini-Neptunes. Yes, this is a real planetary category. But this hasn't been proven yet. But even if, fortunately for us, Kepler-22b turns out to be a rocky planet, we still don't know what the atmosphere is like there. Does it exist at all? What if it turns out to be something like the atmosphere of Venus? which is more toxic than your ex. Then we'd have to dig deep underground to somehow survive on this planet. And then we'd have to come up with a heat source because it's pretty cold underground. Yeah, let's hope this won't be the case. There are many possibilities with Kepler-22b. So far, we don't have a clear answer, but let's hope that scientists will find it before we load the first people into shuttles and send them to conquer Kepler-22b. That would be awkward if it turns out to be a gas planet, or something like that. Dark, mysterious, cold space. Comets, asteroids, planets, stars, and something that's lurking over there, far beyond Pluto. Yup, this could be the ninth planet of our solar system, the one people have been wondering about for centuries. IRAs, which stands for the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, collected interesting data back in 1983. It could be proof that Planet 9 is hiding there. No one knows if it really exists, but this discovery helped to build a model to understand this potential planet better. And in 2016, scientists found out that some small space objects in the Kuiper Belt were orbiting a bit oddly. The Kuiper Belt is the outer area of our solar system. It's a ring in the shape of a donut, filled with leftovers from the times when our solar system was forming. You can find this donut beyond Neptune. The objects in that region of space have weird orbits, almost as if a big body with strong gravity is pushing them away. Knock knock, Planet 9 again! 
The theory says it might be 5 to 10 times the mass of our own planet and up to 20 times further away than Neptune. The astronomical unit equals the distance between our planet and the Sun. Pluto is approximately 40 astronomical units from the Sun. But Planet 9, if it exists, is 400 to 800 astronomical units away. It would take 10,000 to 20,000 Earth years for this mysterious planet to make a single circle around the Sun. This makes it harder for us to catch the space body. There's a theory Planet 9 may have formed between the orbits of Jupiter and Neptune, similar to the rest of the gas giants in our solar system. The gravitational force of one of the two huge planets probably kicked it out of its orbit. Oh no! Then Planet 9 could get ejected further away from the eight planets we know about. It ended up as some sort of icy waves, quite small at the beginning. But as time went by, Planet 9 has cleared its orbit of frozen pieces of rock and dust and finally formed into a real planet. Another theory says that this could be a planet another star lost on its way while it was passing near our solar system. In any case, Planet 9 probably doesn't reflect that much sunlight since it's so far away. And astronomers aren't sure where exactly they should look for it. Space is dark, mysterious, endless, obviously. But if we do find Planet 9, it will be the first solid proof there are more planets in our solar system than we thought. Moving on to an interesting exoplanet, located only 90 light years away from us. An exoplanet is generally a planet located outside our solar system. This one has an atmosphere with water clouds. One year there lasts 24 Earth days, and the planet travels around a red dwarf star, which is way dimmer and smaller than our sun. That's why, even though the planet is 8 times closer to its star than we are to our sun, the temperature there is similar to that on our planet. This exoplanet has a size similar to Neptune. It's also less dense, which means it's mostly made of gas, unlike Earth, which is made of rock. The average temperatures there is 140 degrees, which makes it one of the coolest small exoplanets we've ever discovered. And the cooler the exoplanet is, the bigger the chance we'll find clouds in its atmosphere. Researchers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets, but all of them have been found within the Milky Way, at least until now. For the first time, astronomers may have spotted a planet outside our galaxy. They called it M51 ULS 1. Hmm. The planet is located in the Whirlpool Galaxy, a distant spiral galaxy 28 million light-years away from us. There was once a huge but pretty young star that got stuck in a gravitational dance with something that could be a dense neutron star, the collapsed core of a giant star, or a black hole. The star's dance partner had incredibly strong gravity. It was feeding on the star, greedily ripping away its plasma. Then something unusual happened. An unknown, maybe even Saturn-sized object passed by and blocked this confrontation from our solar system. Now no one can see what is going on. But this could potentially be the farthest planet we've ever discovered. There's a newly discovered planet outside our solar system. As large as Jupiter, it orbits two stars. And as we can observe it from our planet, it crosses in front of them both. The full circle around these two stars, which means one year, takes approximately 200 Earth days. On the day of the discovery of the previous planet, scientists also found it had an unusual companion. It's an extra-hot Jupiter with an ultra-tight orbit around its star. The year there lasts only 1.9 Earth days. This planet has a weirdly shaped orbit. Also, it travels in the opposite direction from the rotation of its star. If you could travel 57 light years away from our planet, you'd see something pink lurking in the darkness. As you get closer, it becomes bigger and more fascinating. Yup, it's a magenta-colored planet. A few billion miles away from its sun, this guy is one of the youngest planets scientists have discovered. It's only 100 to 200 million years old. It's made of pink gas, similar to our Jupiter. So if you could fly closer to its surface, this gas would envelop you like a thick fog. You're coming closer and going deeper, and the gas is becoming darker, getting a reddish shade. And look at the planet's core. It's super hot. Because of its high temperature of 460 degrees Fahrenheit, this planet is like an oven. The heat is the reason the planet glows so brightly. You'll also notice the sky is hazy pink, with clouds made of droplets of frozen water, similar to ours. There's another exoplanet half as massive as Earth, 
which is one of the smallest planets we've ever found outside our solar system. It has a diameter of 5,600 miles. For comparison, Earth's diameter is 7,900 miles. The planet in question is mostly made of iron, similar to Mercury. Mercury has a massive iron core and a very thin crust, which makes it an oddball in our solar system. At its early stages, it collided with some space body at least once. That collision pulled its outer layers away, which is why only the firm iron core remained. Maybe this exoplanet participated in a huge space crash too. That's what probably took away the planet's mantle and left mostly its iron core. Or maybe this is just a remnant of a gaseous planet that used to be the size of Neptune. The atmosphere of the planet could be blown away by, let's say, a huge amount of radiation coming from the star. This planet is only 31 light years away from us, and the day there is less than 8 Earth hours long. The planet is only a little bit bigger than Mars. People aren't likely to ever settle in that place because of its extreme temperatures that go up to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. There might even be molten lava on the side of the planet that faces its star. Such temperatures are high enough to evaporate any atmosphere, so this planet might have had one in the past. Generally, gas giants like Jupiter can't support life because they have extreme weather conditions, temperature, and pressure. And there are no building blocks that might create life. But smaller terrestrial planets, such as, I don't know, Earth, have more key ingredients like oxygen and liquid water. Plus, they have more temperate weather and other conditions. And still, not all of such planets support life, of course. It's not easy to find a planet with similar conditions as the ones we have on Earth, or at least the conditions that would allow life to develop there. But meet Kepler-22b, one of our most promising findings. It's 600 light years away from us, twice bigger than our planet, and with temperatures of about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a so-called super-Earth. It's a category of planets unlike any we have in the solar system. They're more massive than Earth, but still lighter than ice giants such as Uranus or Neptune. Super-Earths can consist of rock, gas, or a mixture of these two. Kepler-22b is within the habitable zone of its parent star, which is less bright than our sun. The planet probably has a rocky core. It may have an ocean, but it doesn't host any life. At least, we don't know about it yet.